Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Carpenter and I'm the Student Development Coordinator and PSHE Lead at East Hampton Park Community School. Now today I'm going to discuss with you and take you through a presentation to talk about how and why PSHE and RSE are taught at EP. So first of all, what does PSHE actually stand for? So this is your personal, social, health and economic education. Now our aim at EP is to give students the tools to develop their life skills in all of these areas in order to prepare them to be future citizens. What is PSHE? This is sort of a dictionary definition. So PSHE education is a planned developmental program of learning through which children and young people acquire the knowledge, understanding and skills they need to manage their lives now and in the future. But what does PSHE teach us about, teach our students about? Now PSHE covers a broad variety of topics and these are taught throughout the five year course which runs from year seven to year 11. The topics are taught at an appropriate time over the five year course in order to match the needs and maturity levels of all students within the school. I would like to take a minute to talk through a few of the topics that PSHE covers. We have e-safety, bullying and friendship, managing emotions, uh, nutrition, where to get help. I'll come on to British values in a moment. And also RSE, which is a big part of the PSHE curriculum. And I'll be discussing that further a bit later in the video. But you may want to take a moment to pause the video and just have a look through at what we offer at EP as a range of topics for PSHE. As I've just said previously, uh, PSHE incorporates British values. Now at EP, we think it's important that British values are respected and we encourage students to value democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, tolerance of those with different faiths and beliefs and a participation in community life. These are values that are set out by the government and they encourage all schools to promote them within their society, within their school community. Now, part of the reason why I'm making this video is that this year there has been a shift in focus from the Department of Education and coming mainly from the government. As a result, the status of PSHE within the national curriculum has grown and is changing. As a school, there are now new statutory, statutory requirements that we are obliged to meet. And as a result, our PSHE curri curriculum has changed. So you can see here, getting your PSHE education ready for statutory relationships, sex education and health education. So what are the new Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 statutory requirements? The Health Education and Relationships and Sex Education or RSE aspects of PSHE, the Personal, Social, Health and Economic Education, will be compulsory in all secondary schools from September 2020. As a school, we are being led by changes from the government and the Department for Education regarding the, our provision of PSHE and RSE at EP. And therefore, we are bringing about these changes to make sure that we are meeting the statutory requirements for all of our students. So what does this new statutory guidance cover? The Department for Education has published its statutory guidance and that is widely available for you to read on the Department for Education government website. And that was published in June of 2019. This covers broad areas of particular relevance and concern to children and young people today. It aims to ensure that every pupil is guaranteed a PSHE education that covers mental health and well-being physical health, including healthy lifestyles and first aid, learning about safe, 
healthy relationships and sex, including consent, negotiating life online and intimate relationships. Now at EP, we completely agree with the changes that the Department for Education are bringing in. And we think it's vitally important that our students are given all of the tools necessary and all of the resources necessary to ensure that they have the PSHE education that they deserve. So the structure of PSHE at EP. So as a school, like I've said, we believe that we are well on the way to delivering the commitments and the changes that the government are bringing in. We are aiming at leveling up our PSHE standards across the school, and that will be a big role for myself to make sure that these standards are level across the school. We are implementing a change in order to ensure that, like I said, all students will receive the PSHE education that they deserve and then they have a right to. PSHE obviously needs regular curriculum time and regular access for all students like any other subject. As a result, we have a fortnightly timetabled lesson for every student from years seven to 11. We tailor our program to meet the needs of all of our pupils and our whole community in order for it to be most effective. The PSHE program of study has been designed by myself so that students are taught topics at an appropriate time which aligns with their individual development. We look at their maturity and therefore ensure that the year seven curriculum uh, differs greatly from the year 11 curriculum. As we understand, there are hugely different needs and understanding within all students as they develop, as they grow, as they go up the year groups. We are not going for a one size fits all solution. We want to ensure that every student is given the PSHE education that levels them up, that gives them the chance to be an even better future citizen. Now, why are we doing all this? Why does the government think that PSHE is so important? So from government research, they've said that PSHE education has a proven impact on life chances and academic success. The strengthening of P the PSHE education status can have a major impact on the quality of PSHE in all schools for all pupils. That is something that we are really hoping at EP we will be able to enhance the PSHE learning and experience for all of our students. These developments mean that all pupils can benefit from an education that keeps them safe, healthy and prepared for the realities of modern life and a review that the Department for Education carried out states that the evidence shows that personal, social, health and economic education can improve the physical and psychological well-being of pupils. A, a virtuous cycle can be achieved whereby pupils with better health and well-being can achieve better academically, which in turn leads to greater success. Now, as I've said, the change to the PSHE curriculum relates to the coverage and also to the health and the sexual education content that as a school we are required to cover. So RSE, what does RSE stand for? So RSE stands for either relationships education or relationships and sex education. So what is RSE and what does it look like for a student? So sex and relationships education is learning about the emotional, social and physical aspects of growing up, relationships, sex, human sexuality and sexual health. Some of these aspects will be taught in science and the others are taught as part of our personal, social health and economic education or our PSHE provision. I will now go through with you in quite a bit of detail and like I said, the level that which students will come into contact with these topics will vary depending on the age group, depending on their year, and it will be tailored, as I've said, at an appropriate level. Not all students will experience this at the same time, and we aim as they develop, they, the PSHE curriculum will develop with them. So like I've just said, I will now take you through the content that has now become a requirement of all state secondary schools in England. So we have content relating to families to do with stable relationships, relationships and their link to happiness and family life, uh, marriage and civil partnerships, 
uh, why marriage is an important relationship, uh, long-term relationships, uh, the role of a parent or a guardian, uh, the information, what information is trustworthy, and recognizing unsafe relationships and where to seek help. Again, respectful relationships, a positive characteristics of a healthy friendship, uh, how stereotypes can cause damage or harm, how to treat people with respect and expect respect in return, uh, different types of bullying, uh, behavior that in relationships that can be criminal, uh, what constitutes sexual harassment and sexual violence, and the legal rights and responsibilities that we all have regarding equality. There is also information regarding online and the media, so res students' respites and rights and responsibilities and opportunities online, the risks about sharing compromising material, the need to not provide material online that they would not want sharing and not to share personal information, where to get support and report harmful or suspicious content, the impact of viewing harmful content, uh, how sexually explicit material can present a distorted picture of sexual behavior, and how sharing or viewing indecent images of children is against the law, and also how their data can be used online. Being safe, uh, concepts and laws relating to consent, exploitation, abuse, grooming, coercion, harassment and domestic abuse, and how people can actively communicate and recognize consent and how and when consent can be withdrawn. Uh, as I've said, this is more looking at the year 10, year 11 program of study, uh, where we go into intimate and sexual relationships. So characteristics and positive aspects of a healthy one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, all aspects in health can be impacted by choices. Uh, facts about re reproductive health, including fertility. Uh, strategies to identify sexual pressure. The choice to delay sex and enjoy intimacy without sex. Uh, facts about contraception and facts about pregnancy. This carries on. So choices in regards to pregnancy, uh, the transmission of sexually transmitted infections and how to reduce risks through safe sex and the importance of testing, uh, the prevalence of sexually transmitted infections, the impact of alcohol and drugs on risky sexual behavior and how to access further advice and treatment. So that is all of the content that we are now required to cover for students on their journey from years seven to 11. Now this is a part of the PSHE curriculum, it's not the sole aspect of our PSHE curriculum at EP. However, it is something that the government has encouraged us to produce for all students to make sure that they are receiving the education that they have a right to. What about the chance to withdraw your child or from sex education? So this would happen following a discussion with the school. I will tell you how to get in contact uh, at the end of this video. Uh, parents can withdraw their child from the sex elements of RSE. And it is stated there is good practice for this to be done in consultation with the head teacher. Parents do not have a right to withdraw or do not have a right to withdraw their child from health education or relationships or any other aspects of the PSHE education. There is no right of withdrawal from national curriculum science, which does include elements of sex education, such as puberty and reproduction. Uh, three terms before any student turns 16, they can opt back into sex education lessons, even if this is against their parent or guardian wishes. The school therefore has a duty to provide sex education during one of these three remaining terms. Thank you very much for listening and for your time. And if you do have any questions or would like further information on anything I have spoken about today, including how to withdraw your child from sex education or more information on the program of study for a specific year group, uh, please do get in contact uh, with me, Mr. Carpenter, at a dedicated email address that we have set up solely for parents and carers to get in contact in a confidential manner should you wish. And that email address is now on screen and that's pshe 
dash rse at epschool.org. So please do get in contact with me. I look forward to answering any questions that you may have. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much for listening.